Hello, I'm Dr. Abstract, and here we are doing a docs video about odd, A-U-D. So odd is new to Zim version Zim 00, what we did in this latest version is we broke up asset into four different parts, pick, odd, vid, and SVG. These three, pick, odd, and SVG, used to be brought in with an asset, a command or a frame.asset method. And we broke those up into individual things. We've done a docs vid on pick here, and now we're taking a look at odd. So let's open that up. With audio, you need to interact with the stage or with the app before you can play an audio. So we've made a new odd right there and said, hey, that's click MP3 or it could be a WAV file, etc. There we go. But we can't play that right away. If we said dot play, it might work. I think I don't even think it works anymore in Firefox, but it definitely won't work on Safari or on Chrome because we would be trying to play the sound before we interacted. So all we're doing is sort of, in a sense, storing the sound there. And then when we mouse down on the stage, we're saying click dot play. Or we could press on a button. So there's a variety of different ways that we could do it. Where's a button example? No, I guess not in here. <laughs> uh, here's a circle. So new circle dot center dot tap sound dot play. Okay. Um, the problem comes when it's supposed to be a backing sound. <laughs> you know, well, wait a minute. I, I've got this game here. I just want to play my backing sound. I don't want them to have to click. So they, uh, it's unfortunate. And the the idea behind it is, is I suppose they found that people don't like it when they go to a site and all of a sudden sound is playing. So you have to interact with something before you can play the sound. It started on mobile. It's almost always been like that on mobile, and then lately came onto desktop as well, unfortunately. So, um, background sounds are sort of the tricky ones. Um, we've got two, two ways that we generally deal with that. One, well, three ways. One would be a toggle. So here's a toggle example. The other, uh, which I like for the most part, is make a pane saying, hey, start the game. So this is a nice, simple pane that says start game. You can put images on it or what have you, or an intro page or what have you. And then a show, this will be the callback. So once, once it's hidden, it will call that function. And then here's our init. Once we've done that, once we've closed the pane, we've interacted and then we can run our backing sound. So there we are playing our backing sound. This means it's going to loop. We're reducing the volume of that. These are some parameters of the odd. And then we hit play. When we had asset, we would say asset dot play. And then we would put these things, I guess. And this would be in the asset. But these things would be in the play. And you can still use the volume and the looping in the play call itself. Uh, but this is handy. If you set it up in the odd, the next time you play it, you can sort of set these up for every time you play it. It will do whatever's in here unless you override it in the play. And so that basically allows you to abstract that to the, the odd object. Um, let's see, there's some more things to look at too. Uh, one is that you might get an error if you're loading an image and interacting with the canvas locally. So do we give a warning on that somewhere? Most likely we did. That's not the warning. Uh, hopefully we've got a warning somewhere. Lazy load plays every time. Click, make a backing sound. First must interact with it. Reload sounds and directory. Maybe we need to add that then. I don't see it initially. What about in the file? No. So we've just, um, yeah, I don't see that. I'll have to add that warning in here. 
multiple instances. Ah, here it is right here. So there may be a security error, so right, right up top here, maybe a security error when loading sounds locally for any Canvas app. And then please read the tips and sound. So we'll click on the tips there. Um, here we also then say uh, cannot be in, uh, played before interacting, but right here, security error that mentions cores. So see the images section above as to how to deal with that locally. This is sound, so if I scroll up here, here's the images section right here, and it's telling you about the cores error. So same error, and here's the same way how to fix it. Uh, basically, you go into your Chrome shortcut, and you add space, allow uh, dash dash, allow file access from files. So that's a space in there after the target of your Chrome um, shortcut. Okay, and then you need to open up Chrome from there first. So close all your Chromes, open it up with this on, and then from then on you're fine. And then sound will be able to play. Otherwise, you're going to get uh, a security error that happens on all Canvas uh, frameworks such as 3JS, etc. You'll get that security error as well. It's not just Zim. So we went through that example on the images, so you're always welcome to go see that uh, live, but I don't think we'll do it for the sound. Let's scroll on down here and see what else we have about sound. So this is an example with the stage mouse down, and then I've said, hey, see the uh, the docs for toggle, pane. Did we look at toggle? We should probably look at toggle. We look briefly at the pane, and then a complete event. So yeah, we need to see those. There's also this thing called interrupt. Um, well, let's look at the interrupt right now. And every time you play a sound, you have some options as to what you can do. You can say, uh, by default, every time I hit this uh, button, if I got a button, so I've got a button and I'm tapping and I'm playing beep. Every time I hit that button, it's going to go beep, 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 and, and they go on top of each other. Like beep, 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 beep. And so that's sounds playing on top of sounds up to the limit of the browser, which I think is 100 of the same sounds can play. <clears throat> but uh, if you say the max num, then that means only one of these sounds will play. So the default is it'll just keep on playing them no matter any time you press it. But if you say max num one, then only one of those sounds would play. And by default, it uh, is none here on the interrupt. So what that means is one the first beep would play. And if I hit the button again, it wouldn't play the beep because the first one's already playing. It wouldn't play the beep until that first beep has finished. So that's the default. If you have a max num of one, it doesn't interrupt. But if we set it to interrupt of any, what that means is when I play the first one and say it's halfway through playing and then I hit the button, then it's going to interrupt that first one, stop it, and play a new beep. So it plays like from the beginning, uh, the beep. So it will be beep, beep, you know, beep, beep like that. It won't finish the first one. The second one would interrupt it. So that's a little bit about interrupts. Uh, okay. And now what we, oh, I, I see this absolute URLs. It, so if you're using an absolute URL to your sound, uh, by the way, this is us loading in an asset of, um, so this is preloading the sounds in this case. I think we had looked at one that wasn't preloaded. It was called lazy loading. Oh no, this was preloaded. This example here is preloaded. What about the one in the docs? I think the docs was lazy loading. But anyway, this is preloading the sound by putting the file name and a path. The path is optional. If you want, you could put the path at the beginning of this. If you do put the path at the beginning of this part, then you would have to, when you make the odd, you would have to put the path at the beginning of that as well. But by putting it a path here, then you only have to reference the sound by the name of the sound. So generally we do it this way. Anyway, that's preloading. Um, you could have an array of different sounds. There's also an asset tool that allows you to, uh, an asset tool in tools, let's go find it. So on Zim, here's under the code section, there's tools and there's asset list. If you browsed, this is the desktop, I 
don't see a bunch of sounds, but if you had a bunch of sounds, you could select them. Uh, I'll just select a bunch of images like that and hit open. Then it will add those to your assets array. And there we have the fit mode, the width and the height, the color, and then the assets and the path. And sounds are sometimes bigger than images. So you'll probably want, if you have a bunch of sounds, you would probably want to at least throw a waiter in there. So the assets, the path, and then this is the progress parameter. So we're passing in a new waiter and adjusting the color of that waiter. Those are three little dots in a rectangle. You could also pass in a new progress bar and that would actually have a loading progress bar rather than just a sort of a spinning thing. Okay, but anyway, the, the asset tool is a nice easy way to bring in a bunch of sounds or images or images and sounds. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's go back and take a look at the toggle and also the complete event. And that was back in the docs here. I was talking about preloading the sound. Which one? Yeah, this wasn't, well, I, I mean, may have been preloaded, but I say lazy loaded here. Okay, as opposed to this is also lazy loaded. And this one is preloaded. So there's a couple of sounds being preloaded in there. And we still access it in the same way. All right, we wanted to see though the example with the toggle. So we have a lazy loaded sound, but we're not playing it yet. We're also telling that sound to, that it should loop. We're storing a reference to a backing sound. We're making a toggle that has a label of sound. We're scaling that and positioning it in the bottom left. So you'll have a little toggle button that says sound. It will be off by default. And then when we change the toggle button, we collect the event object E. If there's not a backing sound, you see how this doesn't have anything assigned to it yet. That means we haven't made our, or we haven't played yet. So how sound works is we can make, this is a reference to the, the sound, it's create.js sound. Um, but to, when we play it, we get something that's perhaps even more important. And that is what's called an abstract sound instance. Nice, huh? <laughs> And it basically allows us to control the sound after we're playing it. So every sound can be played, but then every time you play it, it makes a new instance. And it is that instance that uh, we can turn off and on. So we're going to pause that instance. So backing is the audio file or the odd, but backing sound will be that instance. So let's have a look. If there isn't an instance yet, then set an instance to backing.play. Okay, and the result of that is how you could set the volume afterwards. You can set the volume as you make it, but afterwards you, you might want to fade the volume out, or you might want to pause it, or as you're going to see down below here, you might want to find out if the sound is complete. Same deal. It's the playing of the sound that gives us the object that we can find out if that is complete. Okay, so we'll come and look at that after. So that's a little bit, uh, well, it makes sense, but it's, it's maybe more than expected. It's always confused people a little bit that it's the result of the playing that allows you to control what you just played. Not the original sound object itself, but the result of the play. So if we haven't played yet, then we go ahead and play it. Yay! Um, if there, uh, otherwise, if we have, then we're going to find out if we want to pause it or not. So we say else the backing sound dot paused is equal to not the e dot target dot toggled. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So what does that mean? Here's our toggle button. If we had said const toggle equals then we wouldn't have to use e.target. Some people don't like e.target or you know, they don't quite get it or yeah, yeah, it's a little complicated. This is the event object. e.target is what caused the event. Well, that would be the toggle button. So e.target is a reference to the toggle button. 
when we haven't stored it in a variable, or it would be regardless of whether we stored it or not. Basically, we're asking if it's toggled, then we want to, or well, I guess if it's not toggled, then we want to pause it. If it is toggled, then we want to run it. So that, that, that's how it works out. <laughs> Often I look at this and go, oh, okay, head scratch. I try it. If it doesn't work, which is half the time, <laughs> <laughs> then I just put a knot in front of it and then it will work, okay? So if, you, if you're like me, you're looking at this going, ah, right, uh, yeah, okay, whatever. But since it's just a Boolean, you can try it either way. It's, it's easy enough to try. Uh, or copy that. There you go. You got a toggle button. Checkbox works the same way. You could replace that with the checkbox probably. And same, I think it would work exactly the same way. So this is a little toggle button. You slide back and forth or press and it goes back, or a checkbox you would check on and off. It would work like that. And that allows you to turn. Oh, uh, another one too, which we often do is a button that toggles. So that also is very similar. This would be a new button. We would have a toggle in there. We would have toggle icons, and then you have a little play and pause icon or no, a mute and unmute icon. So that's quite common. Do we put that in here? No, it might be nice if we did for you because we, we built that lots of times. Anyway, yeah, maybe we'll try and add that a bit later. Um, okay, so we already took a look at the, the pain version of it. Uh, there's a little bit more here in that we loaded two image or two audios or sound files in. One we're using a backing that we're playing and the other is we did that interrupt and max num there on a circle, and we're playing that over and over again. Okay, uh, good. I think that's pretty similar to what we did before. And now we've got a path. So uh, one thing that we introduced lately as well is this global path variable that we can say, hey, look in assets. And then what we're doing here is we're loading this audio from assets. One thing to note is uh, this is lazy loaded audio. If you both preloaded audio and then lazy loaded in here, it, the lazy loading would still use assets because we used it when we preloaded, unless we overrode it with like sounds or assets two or something like that. Anyway, that's the, uh, uh, the path global variable. When we stage mouse down, we're taking long and we're playing it at a certain volume. And here after a certain timeout, we're adjusting the volume. So once again, that's the result of the play we're storing in sound. And then we can control it with paused and volume. We can also find out when that sound is complete. So uh, just be careful. That's not when it's loaded. That's when it finishes. So for, <laughs> it's a bit of a pain. For our images, a complete event is when it loads, when it's completed loading. But for sound, it's when it completes playing. Actually, that's not true. When it's the result the, of the play, as in the abstract sound instance, when it's a result of the play, the complete is when it's finished playing. There is actually a complete event on this, if it's lazy loaded, that will tell us when it's loaded. But you don't have to worry about that. It'll, it will The play would handle that anyway. It's possible it could be delayed, but uh, it will remember that it needs to play even if it hasn't loaded. And then once it loads, it will play it. So <laughs> anyway, don't worry too much about that. If you preload it, then it, of course it's ready and it'll play right away. So that's the advantage of preloading a sound is that if I click something and I want a sound to play, I'm sure it's going to play. If, if you lazy load it and you click something, that's probably not going to play right away because it's got to load it and then it will play. So preloading usually is a better solution for both sounds and images in my estimate. All right. Um, so what else are we looking at here? When it's complete, we're changing the frames color and we're playing another sound twice. Oh, so this is a lazy loaded. So lazy load a woot sound. That would also come from this assets folder and play it twice. So that would be lazy loaded. There could be a bit of a delay though uh, in that because that's when it's lazy loading. When it's complete and it's trying to play it, it's gonna, 
If it's a small asset, you probably won't notice. Oh, um, speaking of different types of assets, just so I don't forget, there is uh, what's called a sprite, uh, an a uh, audio sprite, audio. So parse audio sprite and preview audio sprite. Are those the two? Yeah, okay. So I think we have to find it via frame. So here's the frame. And if we look at frame, frame, by the way, has all of the information about loading assets. So here's all the different formats of loading assets. So this also could be an image as it is in here. It's called an asset object which is, oh, this is a multi-part asset object, which is loading them from different folders. This one's the asset object, and we don't have a sound in there, but we could. You see how we could give it an ID and then put the source of it. So we could refer to the odd as whatever individual string you put in there, as opposed to the, the file name. But anyway, um, this has all of the information on how assets are loaded. And one of those things in there would be, um, would talk about, I'll see if I can find it, methods load asset. This is the de facto standard, the load assets. This was the very first way we loaded assets. So everything is in here. And then we kept on splitting it out into different parts. Like, oh, now the frame can do it. <laughs> oh, now we can just call it odd. Now we can lazy load it, etc. Um, but anyway, one of these in here is called a an audio sprite somewhere, although I don't see it at the moment. No cores image. Can you see it? If you read about it, but you can load this thing called an audio sprite, which basically is one sound thing. Font, source, fonts, Google font, asset can be an audio sprite. Here it is. Okay, so all that information about an audio sprite, basically what it does is it loads one MP3 or WAV file, and then you you give it an ID and a time start and a time end, a time start and a time, a time start, time end and ID. And then uh, you can load that all in and just call the odd on the specific IDs. That works better on mobile. If you got a lot of sounds for a game, for instance, you might want to consider an audio sprite. It just loads it in a little bit easier, and uh, then we'll we'll play it just like that, okay? Because it's loading it in from one file. You don't it doesn't have to load a whole bunch of different audio files. So if you're doing a game with a lot of audios or, or whatever, you might want to consider an audio sprite, and there's some information about that in there. Probably we should add that to the odd. I don't know if we did. And like I said, odd is new, so. Well, by the time it gets to odd, it's already loaded. So odd is just how to play it. Um, and you wouldn't even notice a difference. You would just play the, uh, play the ID. All right, is that good? Does that seem, does that seem like enough? And, and then you'll find that, uh, although it's kind of too late. If you've already found it, you'll find it. We'll add it down here at the bottom where all of these doc videos go. And it will say something like um, tour, I think. Okay, so you've just had your tour through the abstract sound instance. Ah, yeah, that goes off to create JS. Here are some properties. I think those are pretty self-explanatory. We didn't talk about position and duration, but I think that makes sense. The ready and the complete event of the loading. Remember the complete event uh, on the abstract sound instance is right here. So this is the abstract sound instance, complete and loop. Uh, those are two events on that, but these are the events of the odd object itself, which can be a ready or a complete. Good. I think that's about it. There are the other options for the interrupt. None, any, early, and late. Just have a read about those. This used to be a lot harder to do. We would have to pass it in through uh, an asset object into the frame or into the load assets. And so it was rather split. You'd have to do it up above, but play it down below. Whereas here we've added all that support right there on the on the odd. The, here we've done it with a style, but you can take these two things and put it right inside of there with a Zim Duo technique. <laughs> ah, 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 ah. Fun.
fun with Zim. And uh, yeah, we've been taking a look at the odd. Come join us at zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash discord, if you have any questions at all. And I hope you enjoy using Zim. See you later. <laughs>